Wow, here we are again, folks. Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. We are going to look for the next four or five uh, excerpts uh, in this series. We're going to look at the book of Ecclesiastes. Wow, or oh, the preacher. And what a book, what a book. To fathom it, to fathom it. We can read it, and it seems like it's a bunch of jumbo if we don't get into it and really see what he's saying. And what he's saying now, believe it or not, is for you and I today, right now, it's for this time. By the way, the whole Bible is always in season. It never is past or future in a big sense of the word. It is present. It is present with us, for us, on a daily basis. We can eat from this word every day, and it never gets stale or old. Uh, you don't decide, well, I'm not going to have that for breakfast anymore. I've had that now for four years every day, and I don't think I'll eat that for breakfast. Well, you're not happy with anything else because you trained yourself to do that. Well, if you train yourself to do Bible study and reading, you will find out that you can actually enjoy it, 100% enjoy it. Uh, you need to get a good Bible. I've got right here before me, this is one of my first Bibles I ever bought, and it's called the Open Bible. It has enough references in the front <laughs> to, to be a Bible by itself. Just the references in the front of it would be a Bible by itself. And uh, so I was going to uh, show you how the first time I studied it, this is what I did. All those markings where I read on a daily basis, I read through the Bible. And uh, this is the Bible I read through the first time. And uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, if you want to finalize the book of Ecclesiastes, say, what is the duty of man? That would be to read his Bible daily. That would be to pray to the God of heaven that made heaven and earth. And it would be to fellowship with God. And this is what we are supposed to do. He made man to fellowship with him. That's why he made man, to fellowship with him. Now listen to this. The key word in Ecclesiastes is vanity. What is vanity? Vanity is what we do most of the time. Every single one of us do most of the time. We look back on the hour we just spent. What did we do in that hour? Did we sit in front of a television for one hour and watch some foolishness that was of no uh, essence for us, no real help for us, no real anything for us? And, and we wasted that hour? And sometimes I have known people who sat in front of the television for hours and hours and hours. Totally vanity. Now, what is the, uh, it, it's, it's called, you know what vanity is? It's fertile emptiness. Hey, you got a fertile life. You could grow, I mean, there's no telling what you could do with your life in the fertility of it. If you're healthy and you're, you're uh, up there and you, you get up every morning and you're good, but if you have not got the Holy Spirit in you, all life is vanity. Everything you do is going to fade away. There is no pre preservation. You haven't put something away. I'm speaking right now uh, in front of a computer, and I'm speaking God's Word. I'm laying up treasures in heaven. When you're studying God's Word, you are laying up treasures in heaven. Anything else of the world is basically foolishness, even the study of what you may do for work. And what you may do for work 
Now, suppose you're a, a, a toy maker and you're making a plastic toy. And that toy goes out. But soon that toy is destroyed and cast away. And it all was something, yes, but it was something of no essence for the soul, uh, for, for long term. And that's what we're talking about, long term. Now what we find out, when we're in ourselves without God, that everything is vanity. Vanity of vanities. Wow. You know what it is? It's fertile emptiness. Fertile emptiness. That's like a plow. If you plowed a garden and didn't plant anything in it, nothing's going to come up but weeds and, and things like that. And so you've got fertile emptiness. So if you want to be happy, you cannot be happy apart from God. If you're apart from God, if you haven't got God in your life, there can be no happiness in your life. There can be a temporary happenings can bring on a smile, a laugh, or a, a happy thing for a second or two. Uh, let's take Solomon traditionally as he was in Solomon 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 2. He said the rest or uh, the rest uh, of influ he was an influential king. I can't say the word in Israel in the history. If we look like back, he says under the sun. When he talks about under the sun, he's talking about the happenings that are under the sun. Wow. Now we talk about the happenings that are under the sun physically. But what about under the Son of God? When you get under the Son of God, then you begin to live. Uh, so uh, he was uh, the Israel's, uh, the history of him, as we look at his life, we see, and from the human perspective, declares it all to be empty, power, uh, and uh, popularity, prestige, pleasure. Nothing can fill a, a God-shaped human being that is void of God. We were shaped by God. His desire was to live in us and through us. But if we don't let him, then we are, have his shape, but we don't have him there. Now, uh, without God himself indwelling you <coughs> through the Holy Spirit, you are, uh, you have a meaningless life, purposely, no purpose. I want purpose in my life. Um, of course, Solomon uh, exclaims, "Eat, drink, rejoice, do good, love joyful, fear God, and despair uh, not." And. Uh, it's kind of like melting away your life. We're like a candle that got lit. And we're going to glow for a few years. And then we're going to burn out. <coughs> Is the wax you leave behind going to be any good? Uh, life is viewed daily. Do you know God gives us life day by day? He gives us our pleasures day by day and our life day by day. He gives us food to put on our table. We have to eat to keep these bodies going. Uh, we should eat in modesty. We should find the weight that we want to be and we should maintain that weight and, and uh, be healthy. And when life is viewed in a daily basis, it is a gift from God. And when we eat, it's a gift from God. And, and God doesn't plan on us to uh, blow these bodies all out of shape. He wants us to get in shape and stay in shape. Physically, mentally, and spiritually. Psychologically. <coughs> the Hebrew title, uh, I can't pronounce it, is a rare term found only in Ecclesiastes. It's Q O. H E L E T H, Quillet. And um, uh, so it's in 1 1 and 2 and verse 12, 7 27, 12 8 through 10. <coughs> it 
comes from the word to quilt, to uh, convoke an assembly or to assemble. My wife used to quilt uh, quilts. I have, I sleep with quilts on me that my wife did with her physical hands before she went to heaven and left them behind. Thus it means uh, one who addresses and assembles like a preacher. Now a preacher is trying to quill his church or weave it together and make all of the parishioners fit uh, in the group that they're in. Here we are, we're in this group. And he wants us to be well knit together as a church to fit, to be able to I have something to see when we leave out of there. And when we come back, we need to come back with a new uh, uh, skein of yarn that we can quilt some more with. We can talk to those people in the church house about what God did for us during the week. Uh, how the Lord blessed us here and blessed us there. And, and different things. <coughs> the Septuagint used the Greek word Ecclesiastes, as it is titled for the book. It derives from the word ecclesia. Now, ecclesia is the base word for the Bible. This is it. This is the ecclesia of God right here in our hand. It's an assembled uh, uh, books full of words that mean something, and they follow a progression from Genesis to Revelation. And this ecclesia, the Latin word, uh, ecclesiastes, means speaker by an assembly. <coughs> this is an assembly of words speaking to you and I that we may be able to grow thereby. And uh, so when you get in to the book of Ecclesiastes, I, I suggest to do this. Uh, uh, it's not very big just uh, browse it read, read through it uh, read through it let's see how quick you can read through it in I would dare say if we were to sit down right now and read uh, it's uh, maybe 15-20 uh, minutes of reading uh, suggestion I would have for you uh, to get up tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening before you go to bed read no less than one chapter but I would I would recommend that you go ahead and spend your um, first I don't know 40 minutes <clears throat> the first time you read through and read through it uh, you'll find yourself reading through the whole book of Ecclesiastes the 12 little bitty chapters you'll find yourself reading through the whole book of Ecclesiastes in about 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, if you will read it uh, at least once a week, <clears throat> I suggest you read it once a day and for a week. And in that week you'll be, have read it seven times and you'll begin then to see it. Don't, don't, don't waste your time trying to see it first time you read it. Learn how to read it and read through. It's like a yin and a yang. It's a positive and negative. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, all the way through. And it, and this is what it is. And it has conclusions and it has restarts and the, about the events of life and uh, about the striving uh, of life and the illustrations of vanity and the uh, conclusion of, of, of the matter uh, as, you, as you start with something. Suppose you were going to put a battery in a car and, and you got, went and bought the battery, you brought it back and you took the old one out and you set that in there and you hook up the cables and boom, it cranks right out. Well, that took a few minutes and you got it done. Well, that's the way Ecclesiastes and God is a judge of all things we see in, in the end of chapter 3. And then we see uh, the transcendent of uh, 
uh, popularity. How what what happens then? And we see evil oppression and uh, uh, the folly of hard work if it's not in God in Christ, and if it's not profiting uh, at least ten percent of what you make when it go, goes into the church. Uh, <clears throat> insufficiencies of human religion. Now we can have a religion that's insufficient. And a lot of people have that religion. It's not God is not in it, and they haven't put Jesus in it. Uh, wealth does not satisfy, and we find that out by reading Ecclesiastes. He was the richest man in the world, the most unhappy man that ever walked on two feet for a while. Uh, wealth, if you have it, it brings difficulties. Wealth comes. Uh, ultimately from God, but if you're not using it for God, then you got real difficulties. Uh, the sanctification of children, the sanctification of labor, the sanctification of future, the wisdom of <clears throat> modernism and uh, submitting to uh, the authority of God and uh, liability. Understand all of God's doings by uh, studying this judgment comes to all men. And Ecclesiastes covers all of these subjects. Enjoy life while you have it. If you if you don't uh, value that wisdom, enjoy. You know, life is short. I'm headed out of here. I'm 78, and I see myself leaving here, going to heaven. And because of that, I started cleaning up. I, I did something this week I've never done in my life. I actually nearly gave away all of my future piled up stuff. I, I had enough stuff to build another room just exactly like this one. Matter of fact, I almost had enough stuff to build two like this one. And and I just kind of gave it away in a sense for a, a, about a, probably a tenth of what I had paid for it. And so uh, it was a new chapter in my life. It, if, if people had seen me do that, they would have said, you, you've lost your mind because you're not you're not one that gives away you're a hoarder you keep things well I got those out <clears throat> wisdom related to business uh, rejoice in your youth remember God in your youth and then it says fear God and keep his commandments is the conclusion to fear God and keep his commandments I challenge you this week to get in the book of Ecclesiastes We'll see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.